Good afternoon, everyone. This is Kristen Schloss from Razorleaf, and welcome to Tech Tuesday. I will be your moderator for today. We are excited to have you join us for our third session of Tech Tuesday, What's New from Eris. Today, the team will be discussing Eris Release 16. I'm pleased to introduce to you our speakers. First, Rodney Coffey, who is our practice manager for Eris. And second, Milan Abradovich, who is our pre-sales architect for Eris. But before I start the presentation, just a few housekeeping notes. Uh, first, this webinar will be recorded and we will be sharing this recording with all participants. Also during the webinar, we value your opinions and encourage any questions or comments. To ask a question, just simply uh, enter this into the panel at any time. So we will have a Q&A session at the conclusion of this presentation. Um, so now I'm gonna hand this off to Rodney. Very good, thanks, Kristen. <clears throat> As Kristen said, uh, it's great to have everybody back for Tech Tuesday. Um, we're gonna be talking about release 16 today. So if we can go to the next slide there. Um, so <clears throat> what we're gonna do today is we're gonna dive into what's new in Innovator 16. Um, again, another pretty light release from Eris. As we know, you know, we're getting releases now every five weeks. Um, there are some things coming in future releases we'll talk about at the end that I think are going to be um, a lot more fulfilling, let's say. So we're gonna quickly cover what's in Innovator 16 today. Uh, we're gonna take a look at those things and then we're gonna take a deeper look into Federation. So I'd say the last three releases, we've talked about the things that Eris is doing for Federation. It's gotten a little bit, I'll say more exposed and more available um, in each one of these releases. I think this will be the last release that we'll see some of the new Federation services come from. Um, and again, you know, we'll start to focus on new topics in the future releases. So um, we do have uh, some other things, some other events and things coming up that we'll talk about here at the end as well. So of course, we'll do Q&A and uh, then we'll talk about future marketing events. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Milan. All right. Thanks, Rodney. So just as Rodney said, we're going to kick it off with a little run through of what's going on in Innovator 16. All right, so like Ronnie said, the release is pretty light. Um, it's mainly focusing on ease of use, making the talk editor a little more accessible, easier to use for the end user. So the first thing that they mainly focused on adding was some localized content. So in the past, the only way to pre the only function of preview for the talk editor was just to preview for specific identities. But now you're able to preview multilingual content and you could use language filters. So if you have um, people using your database in different parts of the world who are running off different languages, you're able to preview a specific table of content for them. There's also a new ease of use thing. So if you remember, if you attended um, our release 14 Tech Tuesday, item type being added to the table of contents is now was um, only available through the talk editor that they added in that update. Um, they removed it from the item type form but they decided to bring that back. Um, there was kind of a lack of familiarity in terms of configuration there. Um, people were looking for adding item types where they always did, and now they're adding it back through a more menu button. And finally, some ease of use things. Um, clicking on the key name in the title bar will now copy an embedded hyperlink on the clipboard. Uh, just to make it easier to say, if you wanna to point to a specific part in your database, you can click on that, copy the hyperlink, and send it off to another user within your database in order to share it quickly. So without further ado, we can hop over into Eris just to show a few of these things really quick. So just to start, uh, like I mentioned, the preview of multilingual content. Um, if you went through our first talk editor kind of walkthrough, you'll remember this view as tab. So originally you were able to only view as specific identities, uh, but now they added the ability to change per language. Um, sadly, in this database, we only have English configured at the moment, so won't be able to show that exactly. But if you were to, say, have someone in Germany, Spain, you can pick German, Spanish for the language of the talk. And then next thing up is the ability to add parts directly from the part form itself. So if we go back to the talk editor, the way that they introduced in release 14 was to select the add item type here, search a blue bar. So for example, we'll use part. 
an add. So that would add it directly to the table of contents here. So now they also added that functionality again to the form here. So if I wanted to add part from the form, it would just be as simple as clicking the more menu and selecting add to talk. Now, if we go there, we should see parts available on the talk. And then one final thing, this ease of use functionality is the keyed name up in the title now. It has a little functionality to it. So if I were to left click this uh, name of the part, I'd be able to get an embedded hyperlink that I could copy into my browser. Oh, that is not gonna work. Okay, well, seems as if that is not working as intended right now. Um, anyways, let's hop back to the presentation while we're at it. So once again, like Rodney mentioned, if you've attended our past couple webinars, you'll see that we've talked about federation, we've talked about ARIS adding the ability to flag properties as federated instead of specifically calling them federated properties. So they wanna make federation easier, but what we haven't really done a good job of is really explaining what federation is and what it could do for you. So I figured that we could take a little time here to walk through that. So first things first, what exactly is federation? So federation will connect to data that is stored within remote systems and then extend that definition with PLM functionality. Um, this connection will be defined using custom methods that define the data transfer and mapping. And so within ARIS, we could make whole item types that are federated, or we can just make a few properties federated. So we can dive a little bit deeper into how that's done. So exactly why are they focusing on federation here? So ARIS has made it a pretty major point of emphasis over the past year, over the past couple of releases, to change the data model of Innovator to support federation. And this is mainly being done to support ease of integration with other business systems, such as your ERPs. And federation will also allow for the easier construction of connectors. So the more properties that are available to be used, the more data we can pull from other systems and pull into ARIS, instead of having to either manually do it, um, manually enter the data, or build these connections by hand. Um, these integrations will allow for an enhanced ease of use, so your end users can receive pertinent data from your external sources rather quickly. They won't be able to, they won't have to bounce between Innovator and say their external ERP to find the inventory of a part. That can be brought in, have a federated property for that inventory level and will be populated automatically by server methods. This data flow can also be made to be bi-directional as well, uh, which will allow other systems to access data records stored in the PLM system. So for this case, exporting a document that you had entered into your PLM to another system. And then within Innovator, uh, federation comes in two forms. So you can have a separate system federation case. And in this case, all data will be stored within that remote system. All properties are gonna be federated, none are created or stored within Innovator. So all of these properties, when you're looking at the property grid, would have to be populated on using custom methods to retrieve the properties from this external database. And then another one would be like a mixed system federation. And some data would be stored within Innovator, such as your item IDs, your created on, created by. Um, but all external properties, you would go through and flag them as federated and then use server methods to either retrieve or update these properties. So just to run through a quick common use case on federation here, uh, data stored within, for example, your data stored within your ERP is gonna be relevant to the users of your Innovator database. So for example, material cost and inventory level is going to be maintained within your ERP. So an item type within Innovator, for example, say materials, can make use of this federated property for your material cost and once again, populate it using simple integration. As well, PLM workflows can be made to branch automatically based on changes to inventory levels, make, making your business, proper, business processes within your PLM be dictated also by this external data source. So using federation will allow for the automated data entry to your PLM 
and also remove the need for someone who resides within PLM to access your ERP system to make that data entry. All right, well, does anyone have any questions over what we've covered? So thank you, Milan. I, I will go ahead and start our Q&A session. Um, just a reminder for everyone, if you have any questions, just please enter them into the panel. It looks like we have a couple questions here. Uh, let me pull those up. First question, uh, was the classical TOC access tab and item types have been removed completely? Yeah, so if I were to pull up, say, our 14 or 16 database here, the, and then pull up a 12 database, just give it a second to load. We can kind of talk through the differences between the two real quick. I could load up. There we go. And there, there are a couple questions on TOC, so maybe I'll ask the second one because it might be related. Um, yeah, how do we handle non-classic item types, example, TOC entries that just show a custom application and no grid? Yeah, so what I would say is those would be covered I'd say the same as previous. So if you were to have, say, for example, uh, in this case, we don't have component engineering, but say component engineering will link to that like app. Um, that will be handled the same way. It's essentially just a link that you can add to your TOC. And then to cover the, say, item type TOC additions. So on 12, this is running off of 12 SP18 right now. So if we want to compare the form of part in 12 versus 18 or SP18, one of those, one of those. Okay, so on the right we have our 16 and on the left we have 12 SP18. So you'll see these talk view, talk access, talk view and talks access tabs on our uh, that is where the table of contents is designed or defined within 12 SP18. Uh, these categories are determined based off a list item um, called categories. So basically before the release of Innovator 14, adding something to the table of contents was essentially a two-step process. You had to go through, create a new category if you needed one, and then go in here and determine where or who could access it and within which category. Um, with 14, 16 plus, um, that is determined within here. So I can determine in which category and for which identities can access that exact same um, part item type. So essentially what they did is moved everything from our talk access, talk view tabs here uh, essentially move that all to within this sa single definition screen. Any more questions? Hopefully that covered it. And next question is, how much flexibility does the new Federation feature offer with custom code? I can often transform the data the way I need it. Will this be also possible with the new service? Yeah, so the main thing that ARIS has moved to within, or in terms of federation, the properties move this or work the same. Um, but instead of saying a federated data type, they now added a federated flag instead. So if you were to make, say, weight here a federated property, in this case, decimals aren't supported as a, um, Federated, uh, federated data type yet, but say if I were to use strings, I believe are supported now. Nope. Text, there we go. 
So in this case, text properties are allowed. Um, if I were to select that federated or make that a federated property, it would function the same as selecting a federated data type in the past. So the back end, it doesn't change that much, it just mainly focuses on configuring the item type and um, kind of ease of use. You don't have to make federated data, data types necessarily, you can just flag um, one of those properties. Okay, perfect, thanks. And this question might be more for Rodney as um, it's maybe a little off topic, but um, people might be interested. Um, does the recent ARIS merger change anything in a major way that will impact users? Um, I think that question's about which, which merger is that question about? Is that about the Minerva merger? Um, they didn't specify, so I wouldn't be assuming that that's what they're talking about. Yeah, <clears throat> um, no, there shouldn't be. So we worked closely with Eris in communication about that. And, uh, you know, all of our, you know, I think uh, the main thing was if, if you look at the med device packages that Minerva KLM had to offer, <clears throat> as well as some of the folks that were there, um, I believe that was some of the key reasons for the acquisition. So it's it's yet to be determined how some of the technology acquisitions will come into play. So, you know, we might have maybe some more things to offer some of our med device customers or potential prospects, um, or even, you know, we're, we're still trying to work with Eris to tackle the small to medium sized business market. So, you know, the, the negative 50 user base. So, you know, customers that have 10 to 25 users that don't necessarily want to be able to open um, and would rather be on some type of subscription service. So today we're doing that with managed services, but you know there could be something to come out of that merger that would help us do that. Um, that's all speculation. Otherwise, yeah, business business as usual. And if they follow up or any you know any specific things they were curious about, let me know. Let me know what's in the pod there. Great, thank you, Rodney. Yeah. Um, another question is: Are there any other enhancements? that are less visible, but still interesting to know? Uh, yeah, so like when you look at say the ARIS roadmap, so I can pull that up real quick. So if we were to go to our ARIS roadmap here, you can kind of see what is coming in the next couple of releases here. So there have been some background updates to other applications that are still running on 12. Um, but you can also see what has come within 15, also 14, and then also what will be coming in the future in terms of 17, 18 plus. And also, if you were to take a look at the release notes of each release, so in this case, we are on 16. You can just go to the CD image file if you're installing off of it, or just find it from the Ares FTP and go into the release notes. You can see that there are other bug fixes that they uh, have made. They're not as significant as some of the key features, but if you wanted to, you could take a look, read through. If there's an issue that you've been having, say with, like for example, number three here, when executing a server me method, the error message, message includes that server method name. If that's something you've been like having an issue with, you can verify that that's been fixed here. They also uh, maintain a list of known issues that they will be working on in the future. Um, for right now, they have simple workarounds for some, some they don't. Um, but it's a good resource to see if you do, are having an issue, you can check here before you necessarily need to log a support ticket to get anything fixed. Um, so yeah. There, uh, yeah. There is. I think I get out on behalf of our support desk. Um, even in just this last couple quarters, we've really worked hard to reach out to our subscribers and make sure that, you know, we know what they're doing um, and you know that we're taking good care of them. A lot of people don't know that this exists, right? So I think Eris does, Eris does a great job of listing all these things out, where they're headed, what they're working on. Maybe not, um, you know, sometimes the information is just a little bit buried. So. Like Milan said, I think uh, I think we might have had it in a previous blog post. If not, it might be something we consider Milan as, you know, taking these links and this information and making sure that 
you know, the, the user base um, is, is getting all that and that you guys have that. Because we do get a lot of tickets um, and that's the first place we check, right? If we get a ticket, we're going to that roadmap, we're going to that future list to see if that's something that they're already working on. Thank you, Milan and Rodney. Um, we do have another question. Is there any other federation use cases that you can provide me? Yeah, um, I would say a lot of federation use cases, once again, are gonna be communicating with external systems. So a pretty simple one is if you have a separate document management system for like a corporate archive, uh, you could have documents that are checked into your PLM system and then transferred directly to that archive. So the archive will be storing that data remotely and that will be accessible through other systems, but you can also search and view those documents using your PLM interface as well. Once again, that's pretty general, but there's a bunch of examples you can have of just any external communication. Thank you, Milan. It looks like we have time for one last question. So, um, with ARIS expanding on federation, how does this impact how a business looks at integration, uh, like with ERP or CRM? I can take that one, <clears throat> just uh, to speak in on behalf of our integration business unit, which I'm heavily involved in. So I think what we're seeing with Ares Federation is a great gateway. So we've seen this with some other, other product vendors as well, right? Um, it's been called a number of different things. It's actually been called gateway uh, for Ares Federation services or Federation items. Um, you know, it it's a great way to build simple data transfer. So like Milan said earlier in the presentation, an, an item or a, you know, a couple specific fields that we want to pull from a business system. But when Tim Nose and I are out talking about integration with clients, that's, that's more than federation, right? That's workflow, business process, building a seamless work, uh, building a seamless business process across multiple business systems. So passing parts and bombs is not federation. Getting the cost off of a part might be federation, right? Uh, but most of the time when we're talking about integration, we're talking about Clover Collected, we're talking about much, many more properties or much more workflow process driven business processes than what we are uh, when we're just talking about federation. So I think if you're getting your feet wet, I think federation is a great way to go take two, five, maybe eight, 10 fields and pass information from other business systems. But, um, for a mature business system integration mm -hmm. where systems are communicating, we're getting the right data to the right place at the right time. Um, I, I think you're, I think you're still looking at, you know, some type of business system integration, whether it be with Clover Integrated or some other uh, integration platform strategy. Great, thank you, Rodney. And thank you, Milan, as well. But this concludes our Q&A session. Um, I want to thank everyone for participating. These are all great questions. Um, if we did not get to your question today, um, someone on the team will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, so I'm going to give this back to Rodney for final comments and any announcements. Very good. So um, just a Tech Tuesday sort of update. <clears throat> so I know we kind of went back and looked at Federation today in the last uh, two or three releases since 14, we've, mm -hmm. we've really focused on Federation. That's that's the releases that have come out from Eris. We do, looking at that roadmap, expect there's to be some pretty substantial content coming in um, the next couple releases. So we should fill, you know, we've been at about the half hour mark for these sessions. I'm thinking that we're probably going to end up filling our hour here on technical publications and 3D visualization, which are the next two topics. Those are both um, tech pubs has been one of those topics for us that has come and gone over the course of, you know, the last three years or since Eric's really focused on it. Right now, we have a lot of customers interested in that. So we're out doing demonstrations and talking to clients about it. Um, so that should be a pretty interesting session. So I did definitely encourage everyone to come back for that. And then 3D visualization is always a hot topic uh, as well. So, uh, you know, we're getting a lot of interesting requests around our integrations for that right now. Um, not quite ready to discuss what we're going to have in the March, May 24th timeframe, but uh, we're, we're expecting another big release there based on roadmap as well. 
Um, just to cover a couple other things we have going on. So we have the test automation for ARIS uh, session that we're going to do with our eggplant counterparts. So I'm not sure how many folks know this, but around a test automation for, so think you've got your ARIS environment, you've got it all configured and you're going through an upgrade or you've made a bunch of code, a uh, bunch of new code changes, you've got a new package to release, you need to go back and do remediation testing. Uh, these are the types of things we're looking to tackle with our partner eggplant. Um, and we're going to have our first uh, demonstration of that functionality, our first webinar on that uh, coming up in March. Kristen, I missed the date in this presentation. Do you know the exact date for that? Yes, that's um, March 24th at 1 o'clock, and that's a Thursday. Perfect. So I think uh, many of you are getting the invites to the Tech Tuesdays. Um, you, guys will, you guys will see that coming through, too. So keep an eye out for that. And then um, we are... Still on target to kick off our first era subscriber user group. For those of you on the phone that are uh, Razor Leaf subscribers, we're going to be kicking that off March 10th, 3 to 5. Uh, we're going to be focused on manufacturing process planning. I'm pretty excited about this. We probably have a handful of customers who are looking at MPP and what they're going to do with that in the next year. So um, always, always glad to have Flexco present with us. So we're going to have a guest speaker there. Uh, Glenn will be coming to talk about how Flexco's uh, use that, what decision brought them to that, and just, you know, some good general Q&A around what that is. And we're also going to have Rolf from ARIS coming along as well to answer any questions from the ARIS standpoint. So that should be a, a really great session. I'm looking forward to having everybody together for that. Um, you should have already seen, the, again, that's for now, we're kind of ARIS subscriber private invite for the first couple user groups, just until we kind of get our bearings and decide whether we want to open that up to the broader audience. Um, but if, uh, if you've been invited to that, you should have received the customer survey. If you haven't, you should receive it yet this week. Um, and then we'll have a formal invite out for that meeting uh, probably later this week, early next as well. So uh, lots, of, lots of good things happening in our AIRS channel. Like, uh, like many of you know, we've really tried to focus more on outreach and customer success. Um, with the addition of Milan, we've been able to do a lot of those things. So. Um, if there's things you can do better, always feel free to reach out to myself or you can email sales at razorleaf.com um, just so we're, you know, we're getting good feedback and, you know, can groom these things to be what you guys are looking for. So um, with that, I think we're a wrap. So I just want to, again, thank everybody for coming out and we will talk to you all again soon. Thanks.